So I'm going to uh, go through and get you to select a step from the Pinterest site. Just be careful not to select ones too complicated. I'm just going to select this one. It seems quite simple. I recommend keeping it simple here. You can start to see. I want to get a sense of the size, how many stairs there are. So we're counting, so 15, 16 stairs. Um, we're going to keep looking at some of the other images. Get an idea of what's going on. Oh, it's not very useful. Green inside. Different views. So you'll notice all the views are in perspective. I'm getting an idea of that shape. And width, so get an idea of how wide it is. Pass all over the views. Yeah, this is quite a good view to get an override. So we're looking at that, it's about 1200 high, the um, start point there, and sort of getting a sense of that overall shape, size. Okay, that seems pretty good. So what we need to do is we'll just go to SketchUp and we can start to uh, set out. So I said it was about 1200 high, so we're going to draw a line 1200. And another one is a bit less than 1200, which is a bit over half, so I'm going to guess. And let's just bring it over and have a look. We can look while we're drawing. So I guess about 750. So we'll type that 750 in there, making sure we stay on the axis. That's really important. Now, most stairs are around 30 degrees, give or take. So I'm just going to assume this is at 30 degrees to start with. So I'm just going to work towards that. So this is just rough uh, to get an idea. But for us to start really looking at the images on Pinterest and understand spatially how it is to be. So here, I want to try and create an angled line. So this is the protractor tool. Good idea if you haven't got it is to bring up the large tool set, so that's how you bring it up. Uh, and there's the protractor there. You can see over on the wrong view, so I've just changed it, holding down shift and then uh, getting the angle. So what I want, what I'll try to see what happens. Oh, that doesn't quite seem right. So let's start again. So come over here, get the right view. Hold shift, click, and I'm just going to do flat, and then I'm going to go type in 30 degrees from that point. So that's now got up the line that we want. So I can start to draw how far, use that as a line to draw from. I'm not too sure how far to go along, so I'm just sort of going to again guess 1200. So I don't know, make something up. So this time I'm going to use the tape measure tool. So go up. Uh, let's see, 2100 sounds like a good height. So maximum uh, you can go is probably 24 for a set of stairs. So we're going to be a bit under that. So use that, making sure when I draw the line that I'm following the points. So you can see I'm putting in measurements. And, so now I want to infer the other line, uh, always making sure that I'm in the right plane because it's quite easy to end up in the wrong plane. Uh, and you can see when you've got perspective, you've got to take that into consideration. So I don't quite know how far, so I'm just going to draw it and then see. And looking at the picture, that point obviously sort of looks like it lines up with the vertical. I can use that to infer the vertical line. Um, again, I'm just going to guess basic, sort of roughly, so three and a half meters. I can delete that. Uh, I'm just going to draw this longer uh, than I need to, and I can always come back and chop that up. So, so six, just over six meters, maybe. And then we can come back and cut that up later. Um, so, so we've got to make sure you can see I'm always using the points to line up and infer from each other so that they're connecting to each other. Otherwise you won't get that plane. Let's check, and it's not very long, which is a bit different, but I'll be able to come back and chop that down. Get an idea of the thickness. So probably it's over a hundred millimeters, so let's just say 
and we're 100, we're taking photos, 150 or so. But back and forth between photos. So let's just push pull this. Let's take that picture as well. Let's push pull. So there's 150. Push pull there. Type in 150. And set it into a group. So we'll call this steer side. That's it. And now we've got one side made and set up as a component. We can duplicate it. So we move, hold down the option key or the alt key on the PC and move over and just let's guess 2,000 millimeters and 2 meters. So now we've got the two sides. The reason I've made it a component, we'll talk about it shortly, but it means we can uh, be quicker at editing. Now let's add the colors. So this has got a green inside, so if we actually find a good green, that will, we don't want it on the whole, we just want it on the surface, so do that. Let's go into the component and just do apply that green to one surface. So you can see because we've made it, um, a component and duplicated it, we need to flip it along the axis. So this one on the red axis, and now you can see that they're facing in on each other. So we've just made a mirror copy of the uh, first one. So it's a good idea to save. Um, let's just call it, or well, spell it correctly, Steer. Now, Steer's kind of a generic name. Maybe on, well, how about surname and then Steer, and then underscore 01. So if we need to save versions, we can come back to it that had made date. So we've saved it. Now let's go back and it needs a top on it. So let's draw a little top. So maybe let's see this cheek there. That's pretty good. Okay. So nothing too much else. So a bit there, a bit there. Okay, so come in and give you the rectangle tool. So R and we'll draw a rectangle across. So I can change the view to get a better one. And I've just moved it down, typed in 150. Typically, you'd want the top to span over the sides so that it's sitting on top of it. So I'm just going to edit these down. So here again, another reason for having it a component, I can edit one and it edits both at the same time. So just pull that out on either side to fill, and then let's add in the green on the inside. So just like that. Um, and save. Again. That's it. So we've got the outside, we need to add some stairs. So I'm going to start the, the uh, riser and the tread. In this case, we've got the riser at roughly 150 and the tread at 270. It's just a, a guess. Um, see how we go. So I've drawn those across and up, making sure they're on the right axis. In this plane, so you can see the colors there, forcing using the arrow keys now. And long, typing in 270 for the raw tread and 150 for the row. And now I'll just join these up and we get to plane. So you can see here uh, we've got two faces now. Let's just make it a bit of a solid. So depending on how your stairs are designed, we'll sort of dictate how this all goes together. So I'm just going to close this in. I'm too bothered about the um, underneath. So I'm just going to draw one and turn it around and draw another one and then close the other one. But uh, you can see the faces around the wrong ones. I'm just going to reverse the faces. Well, actually, if I select all of them, I can do it at once. So I'm just going to if you select them all, you can reverse them all together. So I'm going to call that uh, step and make it a component because we're going to repeat it. So select from the corner, move it up to another endpoint, making sure I click specifically and then multiply. So here times 15, so we get uh, 16 steps. So uh, taking care to make sure that the ends line up, otherwise will, the endpoints line up, otherwise. So now we need to uh, put in a little platform area to uh, meet 
building code and then make that unique, that component, so I don't adjust all of them. And then uh, just line this up. So I'm moving, selecting a line of the block and moving it. So you can see, oh, got lost. It's quite often happens, so I'm just using the zoom extents to get back out. So and then push pull to that part. So get it roughly, that's good enough for us. For this project, uh, you can see that hidden point there. So I'm going to move that, go from endpoint to endpoint, so I've got it correct. Uh, now uh, move the next range up and do the same thing. So move, uh, multiply, and go endpoint to endpoint. And this time, uh, just do a few less. Should be about right. Um, so now uh, let's colour the stairs. Like the green all the way, so select uh, the component, got the green, and do each face. Now the unique one that I've got there. So now we've got the inside of the stairs pretty much done. Maybe let's add some colour to the outside uh, as well. I oh, need to add the top plate as well, top stair. Let's see how it goes. Let's add some colour. I just found a brown for the timber. Usually if you're going to add colour, keep it simple. Try not to use realistic textures at this stage. Uh, takes a lot of practice to get those right. So let's just make the top part a component and we can colour that in as well. B for the bucket and we can fill that in. Check that we haven't got all the, got all the inside. So now let's give this a little bit of context. At the moment we've got a steer well floating in space. So a good idea is use a rectangle tool here, just give it um, as a full plate, so it's sort of concrete colour. Yep, mostly concrete. So uh, maybe we could just use the colour. What, what else can we do? Oh, there's some colours. Oh, what else? We've got uh, number here, asphalt and concrete. Let's try this. Mm, sort of looks okay. We'll come back to that later, but for now that's okay. Probably a good idea to give that some depth. And that's a bit better if we reverse it, a bit lighter. Um, let's see what we've we got going upstairs. Oh, actually, that's bit different to what I've drawn. Let's come in here and uh, adjust this. So you can see once you start trying to copy it you really start to understand how the stairwell goes. So I'm just modifying the ends here coming in and moving that to maybe if we make that unique so we don't get don't alter the bottom step and see what else we've got. Oh, probably a good idea to give the base so we don't get all caught up. Now ground floor, now move this in, that's a bit better. Um, let's see, oh that looks pretty horrible. Yeah even that looks pretty horrible. Uh, textures just keep repeating and look so good. So let's just give it a plain colour and that'll do for us for now. I'm not going to try and get a photo realistic view. So let's get around and get a good view to work with. What have we got? Have a look. See. Oh, that's quite a, a gap there. Maybe from each side, one's definitely longer and got a bit of an angle on it. So you can see it's taken a few views or looks to get that right. So let's come and edit this again. So we have to make uh, the sides separate or unique, so we can edit them. Let's pull this part out. Oh, I keep getting caught up in the bottom. Maybe I get the right surface. It's a bit better now. We need to adjust this top, so I'm just going to draw some lines in here to give us a bit more control where we can adjust. So select that face and move it out, making sure to stick to the end point. And here I'm just going to use the line, select the line. Once I've gone into the component and brought it out, making sure to stay on the axis. So you can see now we're a bit closer 
it's still not quite right. So can I just adjust it a bit more, I think. Go into the component, see the line. So just repeating what I've done before. Here, set the face and the endpoint to endpoint to make sure we're getting it to fix to the right spot. Let's just do this in, in a little bit. Oh, right. Got that all stuffed around, so you got to check, bring it back down, undo, bring it in a bit more and adjust those other ones. Um, out of that component into the top component there, the step, making sure that lines up. It's very easy to get faces all moved, so taking your time. Here, yeah, endpoint to endpoint to make sure they snap together. Right, that's looking a bit better. Yeah, and now just add the colour so you can hold down the command key or option key on Windows to pick up a colour. Okay, we've got a floor thing going on, so let's just do a basic floor for now. So now's a good time to add an upper floor or level uh, using the rectangle tool. You can see it's worth just getting a good view, otherwise the rectangle will go away. So I've just started doing something, let's give it some depth, so 300, just roughly. Um, a decent size. Line it up with the uh, one below. And it's looking alright. Let's see what else is going on. We've got a little bit of a bump in there, but we can deal with that later. Um, what else is going on? Let's have a look. It's looking alright from those views. Let's look and see. Maybe we should look all the way through the photos here. A little box thing going on there. We can come back and add. Uh, what else? Oh, there's a bit of an angle going on. I didn't really notice that before. Yeah. What else? A lot of photos. Uh, oh, there's some planes in here. We can see that angle. So it's not a very steep angle. So we can sort of just pick up on that. What else? Um, it's got that funny curve thing in the box. I don't want to worry about the curve at the moment. Oh, we've got some dimensions. That's really useful. So we should have looked at that at the start and some other parts. So making sure you look through all the images is pretty worthwhile. So let's just come in and uh, tidy this up a bit. Um, let's make, um, get rid of some pieces. Uh, if we select, make that a component. So here, triple click and for one, just so we've got each part ready to go. And add the angle into this. Uh, and then shift and let's just say 10 degrees. Maybe there. Okay, so we start to get there. Uh, it's probably a good idea to add some more of the, uh, the context in, um, but let's save it and we can carry on and do that ourselves.